Yeah. Hello everybody and welcome into another edition of the Rocky Top Rundown, your one-stop shop for all things Tennessee athletics. I'm Joey Peterson. And I'm Bryson Wright. These past two weeks have been full of Tennessee athletics. So let's get started with the Tennessee Lady Vols soccer team heading, heading to Gainesville to take on the Florida Gators this past Friday. The Lady Vols entered their 2022 SEC opener on a four-game win streak and look to make it five against the Gators. Let's roll the highlights. Jada Thomas on the left side of the box crosses it over to Mackenzie George in the middle who puts it in off the goalie's glove to give the Vols the 1-0 lead in the 18th minute. Florida just six minutes later trying to tie the ball game. And Lindsey Romick says no, not just once, but a second time. As the Gators reset, try to go upper 90 and Romick doing her best Superman impression swats the ball away. 14 minutes left in the half and a beautiful pass on the right side of the field to Claudia Deepisupil, and the Vols have a chance to score again. Until Jody Curtis trips Deepisupil in the box, but that earns Our Lady Vols a penalty kick, which just seconds later sneaks it in right under the goalie's hands and into the goal to go up 2-0 on the Gators and hugs in Sue. Now, early in the second half, the Vols have two amazing chances to go up 3-0. But let's give some huge props to Alexa Goldberg she steps, stops both of them and keeps her team within a reasonable distance. 21 minutes left in the game, the Gators are shrieking down the field on an attack as the ball is crossed to freshman Erica Roberts and she gets a beautiful shot on goal, but SEC Player of the Week, Lindsey Romig, steps up and redirects the ball over the goal. And just seconds later, Maddie Perello scores on the assist by Oakley Rasmussen to cut the lead to just one with plenty of time left. It wasn't enough time. And after the big 2-1 to one win over the Gators to open conference play, the Lady Vols will continue their SEC slate back at Regal Soccer Stadium on Thursday, September 22nd, against Alabama at 6 p.m. And you know, Joey, the Lady Vols soccer team isn't the only team on campus with a big game against the Gators this year. The 11th-ranked Vols football team will take on the Gators at Neyland Stadium this Saturday, September 24th, for their SEC opener. That is right, Bryson. With things like College Game Day and Checker Nealon returning to Knoxville, Saturday is set up to be an electric environment. And our very own Ryan Sylvia went out to see how people are feeling about the game. Hi, I'm Ryan Sylvia with the Rocky Top Rundown, standing outside of Nealon Stadium, where the number 11 Tennessee Volunteers football team will be taking on number 20 Florida in just a few days, seeing what students on campus think about the big game. I'm here with Michaela and Will, two sophomores here at the University of Tennessee. Do you guys think we're going to win on Saturday? Yes. I, I do think we're going to win, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, sir, I do. Most definitely. However, some aren't as confident. I do, but I am a little worried. I know we haven't won to Florida in a while, and my family has season tickets, so I've been coming to the games like for a very long time, and I literally can't even remember like the last time home game that we won against Florida. Tennessee has lost 16 of the last 17 games against the Gators, but that doesn't stop many students from believing in Tennessee. No, Tennessee is on the come up. We got a new era coming. Yeah, we're ready for history to change. <laughs> I don't think so. I think we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get back on track with this game. Not at all. New era. Well, as a longtime Tennessee native, I just know that it's kind of like getting kicked in the stomach every time every time season comes around. But I think with Coach Heupel and the group of guys he has right now, I think we got a pretty good shot at winning. Win or lose, there's still much to be excited about for Saturday. Here's what students are most looking forward to. Checkered Nealon. Um, probably checkering. I'm not excited that I'm in the white section, but you know, <laughs> I'm excited. I'm um, to checkerboard, maybe storm the field. You never know. <laughs> the, the checkerboard, that's amazing. It's like, I've seen pictures of it. You know, to see it in person is probably going to be something really special. So that's probably what I'm most looking forward to for that game. Checker Nealon and Baton, Florida. I'm looking forward to getting to the student section, seeing the checkerboard all across the stadium, and watching the balls run out of the tee. Well, always the tailgate. Everybody loves the tailgates, but just to go out there and watch our boys play a good game and hopefully get a win. The energy that the student section and the fans bring to the games um, 
and I'm looking forward to how crowded the game's going to be because I know it's sold out. Tennessee students are definitely ready for the big game, but if you can't make it to Neyland Stadium, you can tune in on CBS at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The Rocky Top Rundown will also have more coverage following the game. Thanks, Ryan. Those students look really geared up for the big matchup this weekend. The Lady Vols volleyball team also had a pair of big matchups of their own this past weekend, taking on number 12 Pittsburgh and number 5 Ohio State, both taking place in Pittsburgh. Coming off a tough loss against number 21 Western Kentucky, Tennessee was looking to steal a top 25 win. Let's take a look at the highlights. Starting off with the match against Pitt, we have freshman Claudia Pollock getting her first kill of the game. Pollock would finish with seven kills and a 714 hitting percentage. Here, Morgan Fingal goes for a spike. However, a Lady Panther sprawls out for the dig, and then at the other end, it's Pollock again with the kill. She would go on to have four digs and a block as well. Later on, Pitt's Serena Gray skies up for the kill, giving the Panthers the first set of the series. And as you can see, this one Pittsburgh fan is absolutely loving it. Let's move on to the drama-filled ending. Pitt is looking to sweep the Lady Vols and goes up for the pill for the kill, but the ball is ruled out of bounds. And now the Vols clawing their way back with Keandrea Granberry. It's ruled out of bounds initially. However, replay shows that a pit player tipped the ball, giving the Lady Vols some life. Trying them out of comeback, Fingal goes for the spike, but sends it into the net, and the Lady Panthers walk away with a 3-0 sweep over the Lady Vols. The Lady Vols also played Ohio State in Pittsburgh, where they were swept for the third straight match, 3-0. Tennessee kept things close, falling 25 to 23 in the first two sets before falling 25 to 16 in the final frame. Fingal led Tennessee in kills with seven, aces with four, blocks with five, and digs with seven. For the Buckeyes, Jen Moore and Emily Lendo led the team in kills with 11 each. Tennessee will look to rebound on Wednesday, September 21st, as they host Missouri at Thompson Bowling Arena at 7 p.m. for their SEC opener. Tennessee's athletes have been finding success on the fields and courts, but now with name, image, and likeness, they can profit off of it. Our very own Gabriella Genero sat down with Tennessee football wide receiver Grant Furking to get an inside look on how, the, how NIL impacts these athletes. A little over a year ago, the NCAA announced their new policy allowing college athletes to benefit off their name, image, and likeness. And for the University of Tennessee wide receiver Grant Furking, this has made a big impact on his life. Myself as an entrepreneur, when I started at 15 years old and came to the University of Tennessee, for the last six years, I haven't been able to associate my original company of Metro Straw while also being a student athlete here. It took months and months of paperwork and red tape for me to be able to associate those for an article that The Athletic wanted to do. Grant is now also helping his teammates and players across the country through his business, GTF Enterprises. Our whole um, vision is to educate student athletes on basic building blocks of financial education, leadership education, and personal branding. With all the athletes Grant has worked with, he emphasizes the importance of being passionate about the brand they are representing. At University of Tennessee, we've done a variety of deals and a variety of sports. We represent athletes, baseball, basketball, and then the team that I'm on is football. Um, the deals always kind of look a little different because I'm passionate about finding a deal that's right for the student athlete. At the end of the day, a lot of brands are going to hit up athletes, but if they're not passionate about that brand, there's no sense in them working together. Grant says he's excited to see the potential NIL has to impact student athletes for years to come. In Knoxville, I'm Gabriella Genero. Thanks, Gabriella. Well, everybody, as always, if you can't keep up with all the sports action going here on Rocky Top, don't worry. You can join us again next Monday for all the updates that you need. Until then, get out and support the Vols this week as they host several big matchups here in Knoxville. For myself, Joey, and all our crew here, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.